Advertising is an industry with its fair share of legends, masters that left their mark on the media and marketing landscape forever. David Ogilvy was the co-founder of Ogilvy and Mather, one of the world's most respected agencies. In 1962, he was described by Time magazine as the most sought after wizard in today's advertising industry. A writer and commentator, Ogilvy was a guru for the younger generation. Some say his teachings are past their sell-by date. Others think his advice and insights are timeless. Sadly, he's no longer with us, so we have to rely on his books, interviews and TV soundbites. Or do we? What if we could learn from Ogilvy's ideas in a conversational way? What if we could ask him questions and get an immediate response? Here at The Drum, we've been working closely with IBM and their supercomputer Watson to do exactly that. In the 80s and 90s, we worked on, on playing some of the biggest challenges in the world. So we took on chess with something called Deep Blue. And as we moved into the 2000s, the big challenge that everyone agreed was around natural language. How would computers understand natural language as we saw more and more unstructured information? How could, how could we process that? We've been able now to understand personality analysis. With as little as 3,500 words, we can now understand your personality. Okay, so we thought that we had a really easy task ahead. All we had to do was get hold of um, David Ogilvy's writings and videos of him talking and interviews with journalists throughout his lifetime and pass all that text over to IBM to analyse via Watson. In reality, it was quite different. We had to pick out interesting snippets and um, text that was sort of self-contained, sentences that made sense uh, out of context. As journalists, normally you ask the questions first um, and then find out the answers during the interview. But as it was, we had to read through the material, identify the answers or responses from David Ogilvy, and then come up with the questions. And in terms of man hours, it was probably about 30 hours of my time, um, personally, and certainly not a case of just um, sending over some text to Watson to do the hard work. Well, hello Watson, really good to see you. I'd uh, shake hands if I could. This is a really exciting opportunity for me to talk to one of my advertising heroes David Ogilvy, who sadly, of course, isn't with us. So if I was to ask him just one question, the first question would be, what are the most important rules of advertising from all your experience and understanding? Could you just ask David Ogilvy that question? I am sometimes attacked for imposing rules. Nothing could be further from the truth. I hate rules. All I do is report on how consumers react to different stimuli. I may say to a copywriter, research shows that commercials with celebrities are below average in persuading people to buy products. Are you sure you want to use a celebrity? Call that a rule. Or I may say to an art director, research suggests that if you set the copy in black type on a white background, more people will read it than if you set it in white type on a black background. A hint, perhaps, but scarcely a rule. Well, Watson, it's an interesting viewpoint, and I can understand what he says, that he doesn't believe in any sort of rules, but he wants to look at consumer response. But I think that from all the learning he's had, he's learned some things. For example, I've read in his book that you must put the product name in the headline of an advertisement, because that gets a better response. So I'm not entirely convinced that we've actually got right to the heart of David Ogilvy with that response, perhaps we can try a bit harder and look a bit deeper what he really believes. We have the list of questions that we want the system to be able to answer, so example questions. We then create what are called question-answer pairs. So we take the question and we tell the system these are relevant, these are examples of answers that are suitable for that question. So we get a feel for, for how well it knows the, the, the topic area. We add more questions in and we add more answer pairs, question-answer pairs. The first um, version of this just didn't understand the question and, and didn't understand the content and so 
when we asked it a question and it looked for things, you know, looked for answers, it gave us back answers that, that made no sense. And to some questions, that's, that's still the case. And that's always the case with machine learning. It's, it's never perfect and you're constantly looking to, to, to tweak it and improve results. Hello, Watson. How nice of you to come and see me. So, tell me, David, where do the best ideas come from? Senior men have no monopoly on great ideas. Nor do creative people. Some of the best ideas come from account executives, researchers, and others. Encourage this. You need all the ideas you can get. Well, I couldn't agree more. I think ideas coming from the best thinkers and the collaboration of those thinkers and the alchemy of putting all of those disciplines together is exactly where the best ideas come from. Hey Watson, it's Gary V. Does David believe that the consumer is misunderstood? Once upon a time I was riding on the top of a First Avenue bus when I heard a mythical housewife say to another, Molly, my dear, I would have bought that new brand of toilet soap if only they hadn't set the body copy in 10-point garment. Don't you believe it? What really influences consumers to buy or not to buy is the content of your advertising, not its form. Yep. Hi guys, it's David Sheen here. So the first question I have for you is simply this. It's a topic that's hot today. Do you have any views on the gender discussion currently in vogue and the fact that women are coming to the forefront of our workplace today? Like most boys of my generation, I started life believing that women belonged in the home until I noticed how much happier my mother was when she went out to work. My first woman vice president was Reva Corta, a brilliant copywriter who later became head of the creative department. For all her brains and ability, even Reva encountered male copywriters and art directors who felt uncomfortable working under any woman. But there are now 52 women vice presidents in the New York office of Ogilvy and Mather, and there appears to be no resentment of them among the male staff. Hey, I think the response to that was pretty amazing. The fact that, you know, there's an articulation that the, the time of the generation, when David was starting his workplace, that women were not really in the workplace, and there was a reflection of that, so I understand that. Now, where I'd be super impressed is if we could actually turn this thing into video, and we're able to have that as a video discussion. But we can't, and so today we have this. Artificial intelligence is set to be a powerful tool for marketers of the future. Capabilities like Watson will reveal new insights and allow us to interact with expert knowledge in a new way. However, AI is not capable of independent thought, and human judgment is still key to the training process. No doubt David Ogilvy would have been interested in this technology, although what he would have said about it is unclear. Hey Watson, could you check? 